Hallelujah, everybody. Hallelujah, everybody. Hallelujah, everybody. Come on, come on, people. Hallelujah, everybody. We come to bless the name of Jesus. We come to honor him. Come on, if you can stand. Come on and stand to your feet. We bless your name. Come on, begin to say something to him. Come on, begin to say something to him. God, we love you. God, we bless your name. You're worthy. We made it. We made it. We made it. We made it. God, I thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Have thine own way in this place, God. Have thine own way in this place. God, we need you. We need your presence right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Welcome, you who are viewing, welcome. We come to bless the name of Jesus. Put a smile on your face. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in the old taste and see that the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. 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 Glory to God. Let us pray. Father God, we love you, God. We thank you, God, for this day. 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 Have thine own way in this place, God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, God. Bring a word like never before, God. We will listen, God. We will do what you say do. Right now, in the name of of Jesus God we thank you in Jesus name we pray amen come on bless him one more time not only with your mouth but with the clapping of your hand glory to God glory to God hallelujah your great name thank you God yes name is something we cannot explain that happens when we proclaim your great name your great name we cannot explain yeah Oh, sing with us. Shout now. King is no other, no other, no other name. None stronger we can call on you. Sing shame. Everybody clap those hands right here. We love to call you. Explain. Yes. That happens when when we proclaim. Shout it out now. Changes. No other, no other, no other name. Come on, you gotta move. You gotta move. None stronger. There is power in the name of Jesus, power in the name, there is power in the name of Jesus, power in the name, there is power, there is power in the name of Jesus, so much power, power in the yeah. name. There is power in it. power in the name of Jesus. So much power. Power in the name. See change when I call you. Yeah. See change when we win. See change when we call you. See change. I'm free, I'm free. 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 I'm free.
I call your name. Demons tremble at the name. I feel my battle when I call. I'm healed, I'm healed. I'm delivered, delivered. Lord, I'm set free, set free. When I call your name, I feel my battle when I call your name. Everybody clap. Thank you, God. When I call his name. Well, bless him then. Hallelujah. Come on, bless him, bless him, bless him. Call his name, Jesus, Jesus. Call his name, Jesus. Glory to God. I feel better when I call his name. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes, God. Good morning, good morning, New Zion. How y'all doing this morning? This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. How many of y'all just glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? How many of you glad that he just woke you up this morning in your right mind? When you got out of the bed, you ain't fall on the floor. Well, some of us may have tripped, but, you know, you got back up, right? Glory to God. Glory to God. You may be seated. You may be seated. Do we have any guests or first-time visitors? If you are, just wave at me. Wave at me. All right. Glory to God. New Zion. Let's welcome them. Welcome them. To those of you who are tuning with us for the first time online, please let us know who you are and where you're tuning in from. For our guests that are in the audience, listen, we want to just get to know you and love on you just for a moment. So if you could just meet us outside these doors, my right, your left, um, in Robinson 2, um, immediately after service. Here at New Zion, we're all about connecting people to Christ and each other. And this morning is an opportunity for us to do just that. Um, is Jody or Angela Stevenson in this morning? All right, we got a, an announcement. How many of y'all going hiking? Y'all getting ready? Woo! All right. Glory to God. All right. Good morning, New Zion. Um, Jody's out today, so there are a couple of announcements we wanted to make. Um, the hiking trip we are scheduled for this coming Saturday, so we're excited about it. Um, there was an email that I sent out a couple of weeks ago, and there's a question in there. If you have that email, please answer that because we're doing some planning this upcoming week. Um, now, if there is rain, because there are calling for but things could change we're going to make a call that morning there have been a couple of times we've gone up to hike and then we cancel because of rain but it never rained so we're going to be keeping an eye on that if it does rain we will reschedule for the following saturday which is september the 30th okay um we're going to have two separate groups going up if you're going to be riding in the van we want you to meet at the church at seven o'clock on saturday morning to head up. Jody will be here with the van driver and she'll take you up. If you're going to be driving your car, there is an email we'll send out tomorrow with the location and the date for you to meet me. It's a Walmart parking lot that's sort of halfway in between. The reason we're going to meet there is because when you get to the mountain, there are about three or four parking lots. So you're not going to know where to go. Also, sales service is really bad in that area because of where we are. So if you get there and get lost, you may not be able to reach us or text us. So we'll have both groups going up. All this information will be in the email, so definitely check your emails. If you decided 
before you didn't want to go, but you changed your mind, just get with me after church, um, and we'll get the information over to you. Thank you. Glory to God. Glory to God. All righty, we have one more announcement about our 75th anniversary. How many of y'all just excited that New Zion made it 75 years? Hey, God. Glory to God. Glory to God. All right, so we have our 75th planning team coming. Y'all come on up. all year. So March the 7th was one year of 75 years. So here we are, 75 years, 194 days later, and we still celebrating. Yes, yes. So um, Isaiah 40, 31 says that those that hope in the Lord will renew their strength and mount up wings and soar like an eagle. So while we're preparing to soar, I just want to, we just need to be thanking God for what he has done and what he's going to do. And as we're doing that, we're going to keep celebrating. So we got some events planned and we just wanted to share with you guys this morning. I mean, it's something for everybody. This is your 75th, some of your 75th anniversary team, along with, yes, yes. Along with some of our biggest supporters. Yes, yeah, so we thank you. We know you all supported, but this was some of our biggest supporters that we wanted to bring up. So thank you guys. So we're gonna start off and we're just gonna share with you. And y'all know how this go. Pull out your calendars. If you got anything scheduled starting on October the 5th, cancel it, postpone it, reschedule it. Cause you don't wanna miss these events. If y'all came to the last ones, you already know what it is. So, all right, we're going to start off Thursday, October the 5th. We're having a hymn choir throwback Thursday. Hymn choir throwback Thursday. So, Deacon Jeremiah is going to give you some information about that. Morning. Happy. All right, all right, all right. Yes, yes, yes. The hymn choir, the hymn choir, we were ready. Did you like a bull in a cage? You ready to open it up, the cage, and be ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Again, you know, it's going to be that, uh, Thursday, October the 5th at 7 p.m. Okay. We don't want to see all of you all there that evening. We have, we, we're going to be singing those nice, old-fashioned hymn songs, those songs that brought us from way back there to right now. Yeah. yeah. We're talking about, yeah. <laughs> we're talking about sore. Those songs are going to take us even further yes. than where we are now. Yes. So, New Zion, let's get ready. Let's get set. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay? All right. All right. All right. All right. Yes. All right. Thank you for that, Deacon Jeremiah. And just so you know, we're going to have five different choirs. We're not going to keep you all night. It starts at 7 o'clock. If you came the last time, you know we came in. We got our praise, our foot stomping, hand clapping, praise on, and we were out of here. So hopefully you guys can make it. Then we're going to move on to Saturday, October the 7th. Saturday, October the 7th, the millennials have put together a field day. So Asia's going to give you a little bit more about that. Come on, Asia. Good morning, everyone. Um, so like she said, I'm Asia. I am one of the, I'm from the millennial team. And so like she said, Saturday, October the 7th, 2 o'clock p.m., we are going to be at Shuffletown Park having a field day, family get together. Um, we're going to have something for everybody. So something for the babies, the littles, the 
young adults, the seniors. Um, so come for some good food, some dancing, and just some games. So we hope to see you there. Yeah. All right. I'm excited. Asia, are we gonna do the? Can we do the line? Can we do the um a line dance, a family reunion line dance at the park? At the park. Okay, y'all come on out. We're gonna do a line dance, like a whole big old family. So y'all just come on out and enjoy that. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to Sunday, October the 8th. October the 8th, our Sunday's best. Jewel is going, and that's our normal service. Everybody's invited, whether you're here, but we encourage those that are worshiping with us online. You need to come in. You don't want to miss the experience. You don't want to miss the vibe. So Jewel's going to give you a little bit more about what's going to go on that Sunday, October the 8th. Good morning, church family. Yeah. Like Wanda said, on October the 8th, you need to come in in your Sunday's best. Yes. My, yes. my virtual listeners and, of course, church family, we want you to bring old members, new members, everybody out on October the 8th. That's on Sunday. Bring your Sunday's best. We want you to look your best, so put on your best outfit. Yes. We're going to have some great time on that day. Let me tell you what's going to happen. Y'all want to know what's going to happen? Yes! All yes. right. We're going to have a band performing before and after service. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And also, our mass choir is going to be performing as well. Yes! All right, mass choir. And we are going to be honoring our former and previous, former and current ministers that day as well. Yes! yes. So we want y'all to come out, have a good time, and put on your Sunday best. All right? Thank all right. you. Yes! Yes! So thank you guys. More information will continue to come. We will not let y'all forget because, again, we got to continue to celebrate. And guess what? I'm hoping that this won't be it because the, 75, the 75th anniversary is all year. So we got to March the 7th. So hopefully we can celebrate some more. I'm just saying. But anyway, come out to every event because we have something for who? Everybody. Everybody. Glory to God, glory to God. If you could, um, just turn your uh, attention to the screens for the video announcements. Welcome to New Zion, where we believe in Jesus, we love God and people. Welcome home. Good morning, New Zion. In this week's edition of Inside New Zion News, join the Health and Wellness Ministry for line dancing class on Tuesday evenings from 6.30 to 7.30 in the former sanctuary. This class isn't just about dancing. It's an opportunity to mingle and enjoy low impact cardio exercise. Bring a friend or two and join in on the fun. Bible study will resume this Wednesday, September 20th at 7 p.m. Reminder for those that signed up to go hiking at Stone Mountain in Roaring Gap, North Carolina on Saturday, September 23rd. Please be prepared to meet at the church promptly at 7 a.m. Minimum age requirement is 15 due to the nature of the terrain. For questions, contact Angela Stevenson or Jody Rose. Mass choir rehearsal will be held on Tuesday, September 26th and October 3rd at 7 p.m. in the sanctuary. Everyone that's interested in singing is encouraged to attend. The new members ministry will be distributing membership certificates in the former sanctuary after service on Sunday, October 1st for those who join the church between January 2022 to present day. What a heartwarming way to mark your commitment to our church family. Ladies, Get ready for an enriching seven-week women's Bible study as we follow Priscilla Shire's guidebook on discovering the armor of God. Invite friends and family. You can register online or after service through September 27th. See the weekly email for additional information. Contact women at InsideNewZion.org if you have questions. If you would like to connect with us via social media, join our Facebook page at New Zion Missionary Baptist Church. Join us on YouTube and Instagram 
at New Zion Be Well. If you would like to receive the weekly email, email info at insidenewzion.org. New Zion family and friends, we want to remind you that no food or drinks are permitted in the sanctuary during service. If you need to visit the restroom during service, please use those located in the lobby. All right, New Zion. Here's a reminder to join one of our weekly events, Intercessory Prayer and Believer's Education on Sundays, Intercessory Prayer and In-Person Bible Study on Wednesday, Fitness Classes on Tuesday and Saturday, and Monday through Friday. We pray every morning. This has been another edition of Inside New Zion News. Please govern yourselves accordingly and remember to be well. Have a great week, New Zion. With everybody standing, come on, praise team, help us. You make all things new. Make all things new, yes, you make all things new, and I will follow you forward. You come on, let's sing this as a church. You make all things new. to announce that we have two ladies here to get baptized this morning. No, let's do a lot better than that. We have two ladies here to get baptized here today. So I have me here this morning, Miss Beverly Peoples. And so we thank God for her and we thank God for the journey that he has you on, my sister. As I'm looking at your eyes and I see the tears flowing, we thank God that he has not forgotten about you. And I'm coming into agreement with the Lord that your ladder shall be greater. Your ladder shall be great. So whatever was ailing you or issuing you or was a challenge for you, now it's in the hands of the Lord. And we trust that however he resolves, it will come to the completed end that works out for his glory and your good. So my sister, I have three questions for you. If you're in agreement with these, you respond by saying yes to each. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior? Do you believe that he died for your sins? Do you commit to following him all the days of your life? All right, young lady, we'll lift your hands on your chest. I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You may call me. Celebrate, you make all things.
right, some news on. I'm pleased to have with us here today Miss Sierra King, who's coming to get baptized. So all I'm going to say is may the Lord God bless you, and may he bless you real good. Somebody shout real good. Real good. Somebody shout real good. So I'm going to say that again. May the Lord God bless you, and may he bless you. Real good. So now, see, I have three questions I want to ask you. If you're in agreement with these, respond by saying yes to each. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior? Do you believe that he died for your sins? Do you commit to follow him all the days of your life? Amen. With your hands on your chest, Sierra, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I will follow you, follow you. Forward. You make all things new yet to do. You make all things new. You make all things new. And I will follow you, follow you, follow you. Forward. Oh, say it one more time. to God. New Zion is giving time. No, uh-uh. New Zion is giving time. Yes. Come on, because some of y'all know God has been real, real good to us, right? Glory to God. You may have your seats. You may have your seats. If you are in need of an offering envelope, please just wave your hands and one of our ushers will bring you an envelope. To those that are tuning with us online, this is an opportunity for you, um, and we want to invite you to participate in this form of worship as well. Right across the screens, you'll see five ways to give. Thank you. Please follow the direction of our ushers for those in the sanctuary. Every praise is to our God. Yes. Come on, you know I have to sing it. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every word. Every word of worship. Yes. Is one of four. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise Every is praise to our God. Is to our God. Come on, sing with us. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. That's it, people. Sing with us. To our God. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Is to our God. Yes, to our God. Come on, let's take it up right here. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every word. Every word I worship with one accord. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Is to our God. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah. One big choir. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on, let's take it up again. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on, sing it, sing it. Every word of worship with one of more. Every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Yeah. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. It's to our God. Yes, God, yes, God. Come on, you 
singing. Come on, everybody should be singing now. One big choir. God, my deliverance. That's it. God, my deliverer. We honor you, God. We worship you. God, my Savior. Yes, yes, God, my. God, my healer. God, my deliverer. God, let's go to God in prayer. Most gracious, loving God, God, we love you. We thank you, God. God, we thank you for these gifts and we thank you for the givers, God. Continue to use us, continue to guide us and lead us, God. Help us to be good stewards over that which you have blessed this house with, Father God. So, God, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. I'm free indeed. I'm free indeed. I'm free indeed. Are you free? Are you free? No chains are holding you. <laughs> Thank you, God. Yes, God. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. My Lord. Oh, oh, oh. I'm free indeed, in Christ I'm free indeed, no chains are holding me, it's who I choose to be, hey, I'm free indeed, in Christ I'm free indeed, no chains are holding me, it's who I choose to be, everybody sing now, I'm free indeed, everybody sing it, in Christ I'm free indeed, no chains, no, no chains, chains are holding me, it's who, I it's who I choose. Come on, sing. I'm free indeed. I'm free indeed. Hey. In Christ, I'm free indeed. No chains. No chains are holding me. 
Yes, God. Come on, sing that again. You got it now. Sing it with us. I'm free indeed. Yes, in Christ. No chains are holding me. It's who I choose to be. Come on, sing that again. I'm free indeed. Yes, I am. Yes. No chains are holding me. Yeah. I choose to be. I choose to be. I choose to be free. I choose to be free. Yeah. Come on, sing it with I choose to be free. I choose to be. I'm free indeed. In Christ, I'm free indeed. No chains. No chains are holding me. It's who I choose. It's who I choose to be. Come on, sing it now. I'm free indeed. In Christ, I'm free. That's it. That's it. No chains are holding me. It's who I choose. Come on, sing it again. I'm free indeed. I'm free indeed. In Christ I'm free indeed. No chains. No chains are holding me. It's who I choose it's to be. Who I choose to yes, be. sing it again. I'm free indeed. Yes, Lord. In Christ I'm free indeed. Hey. No chains are holding me. It's who I, I choose, choose to be. I choose to be free. I choose to be free. I choose to be free. Choose to be. I choose to be free. Yeah. I choose to be free. I choose to be free. I'm free indeed. I'm free indeed. In Christ I'm free. Was blind. Was blind, but now it's who I I'm meant to be. It's who I'm meant to be. I'm free indeed. I'm free indeed. Yes. In Christ I'm free indeed. Was blind. Was blind, but now I see. It's who Come on, I sing that again. Everybody be. sing. Tell them free indeed. I'm free indeed. In Christ, I'm free indeed. No chains. No chains are holding me. It's who I'm meant to be. It's who I'm meant to be. I'm free indeed. I'm free indeed. In Christ, I'm free indeed. Was blind. Was blind, but now it's I see. It's who I'm meant to be. It's who I'm meant to be. I choose to be. I choose to be. Yes, Lord, come on, do you choose to be free? I choose to be free. I choose to be free. Come on, sing it. I choose to be free. Come on, sing it. I choose to be free. Come on, choose to be I'm free indeed No chains are holding me It's who I choose to be I'm free indeed In Christ I'm free indeed No chains are holding me It's who I choose to be Everybody sing now I'm free indeed In Christ I'm free indeed No chains are holding me It's who it's who I choose to be. I'm free indeed. I'm free indeed. In Christ, I'm free yes. indeed. No chains are holding me. It's who I choose to be. I am free. Praise the Lord. I am free. No longer bound No more chains holding me My soul is resting It's just a blessing Praise the Lord yeah. Hallelujah I'm free. 
a blessing No more chains are holding me. No more chains are holding me. I got my liberty. I'm not bound anymore. Why? Because I'm free. The enemy thought he had me, but I got away. <laughs> oh, I got away. <laughs> Put a smile on your face. The enemy thought he had you, but you got away. You're still above ground. I'ma say it again. You're still above ground. Nobody threw dirt over you. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's still. Hallelujah. Friends walk away, but it's still. Hallelujah. Tears may be falling, but it's still. Hallelujah. <laughs> Back is against the wall, but it's still. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. And my answer is still yes. Hallelujah. 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 What is the highest praise? I want you to say it. What is the highest praise? No money in the bank is still. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm free. free well if you, if you are free well if you are free what are you going to do yeah. nah, 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 nah. if you're free what are you going to do when praises go up blessings come down so forget about who's beside you who around you it's just you and God. It's just you and God right now. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be. Shall continually be. Shall continually be. I may have to stagger sometimes. I even may have to crawl sometimes. But the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Keep pushing. Keep believing. No weapon that is formed against you will be able to prosper. 
Why? Because grace and mercy is following you all days of your life. Grace and mercy is following you all the days of your life. So stick your chest out. Stand strong. Because at the end of this year, you will finish strong. You will finish strong. You will finish strong. Yes, the enemy, he's on the run now. You got him on the run. You got him on the run. Glory to God. You are the source of my strength. You are the strength of my life. sing that one more time you are you are come on you are come on help us sing it come on you are the strength of my life I will Finish. Amen. Uh, it's finished. You got your joy back. You got your strength back. And you even have your smile back. So keep trusting in the Lord. Keep trusting in the Lord. Lord have mercy. You are. Come on, everybody singing. Everybody singing. You are. You are the dream of my life. And I live. Total freeze. And once again, let's finish. Amen. Uh, come on, let the enemy hear it. Well, 
we might as well. Tell your neighbor, we might as well. Might as well what? Praise him. Might as well what? Praise him. Might as well what? Worship him. So now let's translate all of that into a moment of worship. That song speaks directly to my spirit. Where the writer says, you are the source of my strength. You are the strength of my life. And I'll lift my hands in total praise. Come on, we're going to linger there just for a moment. Just for a moment. Y'all flow with the spirit as it's moving. You are the source of my strength. You are the strength of my life. And I lift my yes. hands in total praise. Come on, we're going to hum that as a church community. Come on, we're going to lift this up and sing from the depths of our pain, from the depths of our confusion, from everything in us that we need to deliver unto the Lord. We're going to say, I lift my hands in total praise. Come on, we're going to catch this here in one second, in one second, in one second. Get your minds right and your spirits right as we continue to invoke the spirit of God here in this house. This is medicine for somebody here today. Come on, come on, let's sing this church. You are the source of my strength. Here we go. You are. You are the strength of my life. You are the strength of my life. And I lift my hands in total yes. praise. Let's bring that back. Come on, church. Tap into this. Tap into this. Tap into this. You are the source of my strength. You are the source of my strength. You are the strength of my life. You are the strength of my life. Now everybody lift a hand and say, I lift my hand. That again, as you feel comfortable, grab the hand of the person beside you with lifted hands. Lift them up. You are. You are the strength of my life. And I lift my hands in total praise. that you're holding we're going to pray and press pray and press pray over that hand and press into them the encouragement that they need so father for the hand that i hold right now oh god i may not know them and even if, even if i do i may not know their need but father i squeeze that hand dear lord i'm squeezing that hand i'm pressing into their hand the spirit of forgiveness their God, I'm pressing into their hand the spirit of hope and joy and love and the spirit, dear God, to look forward to a greater day in the name of Jesus, dear Lord, for my brother and my sister right beside me, dear God, with lifted hands, dear Lord. We're all in this together as one body, dear Lord, as one collective body of believers, dear Lord. And Father, we are submitting ourselves to you in a way to where we give you full permission 
to take charge over our lives. Now, God, as we're here in this house, we pray that your spirit would never vacate this place. Because wherever you leave, dear Lord, it's time for us to go to. So, Father, we want to be where you are. I pray for my brother and my sister, and I believe you for them. And I thank you with everything that I have, knowing that it shall be well. It shall be well. In Jesus' name, amen. Now put those Holy Ghost hands together. Now let's do it for real. Let's do it for real. Put those hands together. Come on, musicians. some of y'all out there that need to be up here yeah my lord the lord has blessed us with some voices in the house but isn't it funny that even if you don't have the right voice when the anointing falls in the house doesn't matter how many runs you can do because when you offer yourself up to the lord by his spirit he'll break every chain He'll remove all the shackles. Come on, I'm preaching already, church. He'll deliver, heal, set free. So I thank God what he's doing in the house today. Thank you, praise team. You all may be seated. Give yourselves a hand. Amen. If I can get a little bit more of my monitors up here, too, please. Well, good morning to everybody here. Good morning. Now, y'all say good morning back to me. Good morning, church. All right. Thank you. Y'all don't hurt my feelings like that. Amen. To those of you online, God bless you all too. Um, We welcome everybody here on this beautiful Sunday morning. It's raining outside. Is it still raining when you all came in? Still raining? All right. Well, Well, we know without the rain, the flowers won't bloom. So we need whatever God sends to do exactly what he needs to be done. So now we, uh, um, there was an announcement uh, that was given a little bit ago about our 75th anniversary continuation. Listen, you all, please tap into that, tap into that, tap into that. We're still continuing to celebrate our 75th year as a church, and we're going to continue to do it big, and we are going to have a lot of fun. Is that all right? Is that all right? Yeah. Uh, one or two other things, and we're going to move on with the word of the Lord. Um, um, we are opening up a class or a course. It'll be an announcement starting uh, next week. Um, I'll just say a small group session that we're entitled in Divorce Care. Divorce Care. I've heard from many of you um, who are struggling because at some point in your life, um, the marriage that you intended to last forever, for whatever reason, did not. And as a church, we want to be a church that helps minister uh, to you and meet those needs so you can stay on track with wherever God is leading you to. And so we pray that whatever wound came out of that, we can help deal with that um, so they can stop the bleeding. So on October the 9th, 
and October the 16th. Everybody say the 9th and the 16th. We'll start sign-ups next week just because a lady um, who's a licensed professional therapist, she will be uh, leading the course and needs to know how many will be in attendance. We'll start um, sign-ups for that next week. But on that Monday, it's a Monday, 7 o'clock, um, we'll have those two weeks to where I will give uh, the direct attention to those of you who are at that point in your life. Amen? Amen. How's everybody doing this morning? We doing good? Now, come on, I need some more energy. Y'all making me sad up here. Are we glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Amen. All right, well, let's get to it. Let's get to it. Meet me in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12. And if you would, please stand once you have found it for the reading of the Word of God, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12. music continue to play softly uh, while we get some batteries for my microphone. Luke chapter 12, starting at verse 13. If you are there, say, I'm there. If anyone's not there, say, I'm not there. All right. All right, Luke chapter 12, starting at verse 13. I'll be reading from the New International Version, listen to the wording or the language you hear in this story. It says in verse 13, someone in the crowd said to him. Now him referring to Jesus. Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, man. Who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, watch out. Be on guard against all kinds of greed. For life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then in verse 16. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. Verse 17. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus again. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. If y'all can bring me some batteries here for this, please. All right. This is how it would be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. So now we're still in the sermon series, Soar. Everybody say Soar. Throw your hands in the air and say Soar. Amen. Thank you. Now, with SOAR, we're still in the O, which is operate in order and in excellence. 
order and in excellence. Now, we are to operate in order that God is leading us to. The title of this message is we have to stay on track. Got to stay on track. Stay on track. Come on and pray with me. Father, we pray that none of us will leave here today unchanged. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Everybody say, stay on track. So here it is. Jesus has been effectively ministering, preaching and teaching the gospel in which he was assigned and sent to bring here to this world. And in the preceding verses of this chapter, Jesus is preaching and teaching about hell salvation, and all things to do with the kingdom of God. Then while Jesus is preaching, someone interrupts his sermon and says to Jesus, Jesus, tell my brother to give me the inheritance that is mine. Jesus wasn't even preaching about anything related to that. But a guy stood up and said, hey, Jesus, tell my brother to give me the money that is mine. What is interesting, church, is that here we are again, just like last week, to where we're seeing that there are issues that exist within families. We can't pick the families that we have. We only have the families that God has given us. But we need to do something about all of these family issues that are taking place. It's interesting because the way that the Bible lays it out is that if we have strong families, then we'll have strong communities. If we have strong communities, then we'll have strong states. And if we have strong states, then we'll have strong countries. And if we have strong countries, we'll have a strong world. So in order for us to have a strong world, we need to have strong countries. In order for us to have strong countries, we have to have strong states. In order for us to have strong states, we have to have strong cities. And then from strong cities to strong communities, everything comes back to the family. I want to minister to everybody here right now as I step away from my notes just for a brief moment. Where are you with all this drama going on in your household? Because it limits who we are and what we can do for and with and in the kingdom of God as long as we have all these little bickering arguments and all of this stuff that is creating a wedge in between us and the people that God has called us to love. Why y'all quiet in the house of God? Who you mad at this morning? Are they right beside you? Come on, you can say so. Because the strength of the, the world that we live in is contingent upon the strength of our families. And so now whatever you have been holding on to, by God's grace, let it go. So here it is. We have a guy who interrupts Jesus and says, Jesus, tell my brother to give me the money that he owes me. And what's interesting also, too, here with this point of the passage is that he is listening to the sermon and trying to apply something to somebody else. I'm leery about all the saints that always listen to a word, but somehow the word always end up needing to be for somebody else. How come the word ain't never for you? (laughs) 
And so he's saying, yeah, Jesus, you're doing some good preaching. Yeah, and I'm sure they had the organ playing and all of that, and it was a good old high time in the Lord. And so now he's taking that word and trying to apply it to somebody else. So here it is. Put your hand on your chest right now. Everybody put your hand on your chest. And everybody repeat after me. Say, me, me. This, word this word is for me today. No matter what the pastor say, this word is for me. So don't you leave here saying, girl, you got to work. You need to listen to this online. Because <laughs> the pastor been, no, the pastor was preaching to you this morning. And so he says, Jesus, tell my brother, my brother, my brother to give me the money that he owes me. Now, I read a lot in this story because Jesus goes on to tell a parable that has to do with greed. By saying, don't put more in your possessions than you do in the kingdom of God. But that's not what I'm preaching on here this morning. Because I could have stopped right around verse 15. Because now I'm preaching on a topic, stay on track. Jesus was preaching about a lot of things in verses 1 through 12 that had nothing to do with this guy's question. And if you noticed it, Jesus never answered his question because Jesus knew that with the degree of his assignment that he could not afford to lose focus. Here Jesus is, all the omni words that we use. Omni means all, so he's omnipotent. Omni means all. Potent means powerful. He's omnipotent, all-powerful. We know that he is all-present, omnipresent. He's all-everywhere. But if we also know that he's omniscient, all-initiant, meaning science, knowing, if he's all-knowing, then Jesus knew exactly what they were dealing with, and Jesus knew exactly what it would take to bring it to a resolution, but Jesus never addressed his question even though he could but Jesus knew he could not afford to get distracted God is leading each and every one of us to an expected end God is taking us somewhere God is doing something in our lives to where we are on a journey with him and the last thing that you can do is get distracted because distractions are a work of the enemy. Distractions are what the enemy puts right before you to knock you off your game. And I'm praying here in the name of Jesus that everybody here up under the sound of my voice will eventually learn how to manage your distractions. Point number one of our message here today is that you have to learn how to manage your distractions. Now, distractions are a thing that prevents someone from giving full attention to what's in front of them. Read that one more time. Distractions are a thing that prevents someone from giving full attention to what is in front of them. If God has you marching somewhere, and it requires all of your attention, the only way that the enemy can pull you away from where God is taking you to is to distract you, to shift your focus. Because of the word God says that I look to the hills from with cometh my help. And my help coming from above. If the enemy knows that, he's going to try to redirect your attention. And I'm going to tell you, church, the enemy knows exactly what you like. And he knows how you like it. And with him knowing exactly what you like and how you like it, sometimes he'll put that very thing right in front of your face so that it might distract you. Because he knows that if he can distract you, then that means he can knock you off course 
So I want to speak to somebody here now in the name of Jesus. Listen, I know you mean well, but you can't answer every email. You can't respond to every text. You can't entertain every conversation. You can't pick everybody's kids up from school. You can't donate to every cause. You can't be everywhere. You can't do everything. You can't go every place. You can't be a part of everybody's agenda. Why? Well, because it might distract you from where God is trying to take you. You mean well. Your heart is in the right place. But no, if you are focused on God, then you sometimes have to say no to some people, some places, and some things. Am I preaching to anybody here this morning? Because the enemy tries to distract us all. And here it is. This is how you know you're close to your destiny. Because the enemy will start trying to distract you. Right when you're close, you're close. And I'm believing that at least 10 of y'all are close. Somebody here in this section, you're really close. Somebody here, y'all really close. Oh, I feel about 10 of y'all over here that are really close. And you're close to exactly the blessing that God has. But I want to warn you, as you're getting close, the enemy's going to try to pull your attention away. And there are some things you got to say no. There are some things you got to let go of. There's some things that you can't afford to put your attention to. Why? Well, because your destiny is at the mercy of your focus. Real quick story, real quick. When I was uh, playing ball in college and everything my freshman year, I did not play at all. I mean, I did not play at all. I rode the bench almost the whole year. And when you're riding the bench, all you do is just get to watch the game. So here I am with my other freshmen on the team, and we're just sitting here on the end of the bench laughing, cracking jokes, and everything. And so there was this one game, and all the people who love sports, you'll understand this, one game, and we were up by 25 points with 10 minutes left in the game. We ended up losing by 15. And we ended up losing by 15 because with all that celebration, with all that laughing, and all the hee-heeing and haw-hawing and joking and all that we were doing, we lost focus. You're losing something in your life because you're losing focus. So today, in order to operate in order and excellence, you have to manage your distractions. The second point here, everybody say number two. Here it is, because now the guy comes to Jesus and says, Jesus, tell my brother to give me the money that he owes me. There is a conflict in that family, and they want Jesus to bring a resolution to it. So point number two, in order to stay on track, is that you can't attend every argument you're invited to. Some people will bring drama to you. (laughs) I feel like I'm only preaching this side over here. Some people will bring drama to you with an open invitation. But just because you were invited to the party don't mean you got to attend the party because you got enough mess in your own life to try to resolve somebody else's stuff. So if you are going to stay on track, you can't attend every argument, come on somebody, that you are invited to. And sometimes, People won't invite you to an argument for their sake, but they're trying to pull you into an issue that they got with you. But even some of the issues that you got with me might have to be delayed to 2026 because I got some other stuff that I need to tend to. 
Because, see, when you are a person of purpose and you understand that God is ushering and moving and God is leading and directing, I know you might be mad at me. You might be upset at something that I've done. I'll get to it one day because that argument might knock me off course. So I'm curious for everybody here that you know that, yeah, there's some issues and trauma and some situations that you could respond to, but God has told you if you respond to one more issue that somebody brings to your face, then you might miss exactly where he's trying to take you to. I'm going to tell you here, you don't have to attend it. You don't have to attend it. You're going to get a text message here later on today. Somebody's going to say, girl, let me tell you what happened. No, 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 no. Don't get sucked into that. Because it's going to knock you off course. You got to stay on track. Point number three is we're talking about staying on track. The third point is you have to stay in sequence. Stay in sequence. For the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by God. The steps of a good man are ordered by God. So every step of a good man are ordered by God. And if God is ordering our steps, then it is even more important to stay in sequence. The worst thing that you can do is skip a step. They came to Jesus to resolve an issue that they had. Y'all with me, church? And so Jesus said, who appointed me to be drudge or an arbiter over your situation? Jesus knew that they were trying to make him judge. But Jesus was saying, one day I'll be the judge. But right now, that's not what I'm supposed to do. Jesus could have resolved their situation, but it was in time for him to act in that manner. Sometimes, When we are skipping steps, you can get into something too soon. And the worst thing that you can have is a blessing that is too soon. Because now Jesus was saying, yes, one day I'll be the judge that you're trying to empower me to be, but it is not my time or it is not my season right now. And Jesus did not want them to cause him to skip a step because Jesus said, yes, I'll be what you need me to be. But before you crown me, you first have to cross me. Because Jesus was saying, I'm not going to let you crown me until you cross me. Because Jesus knew that, yes, I'll be with the Lord in glory as the final judge. But before that happens, there's something else that needs to happen before that. So before God gets you to your destined place, there are some things that have to happen. And so now, when we're talking about staying in sequence, the last thing that we want to do is have something that we're not ready for. I've said this in some messages before that I pray and I believe the Lord, and I really do believe it. I don't say it just I believe that one day that the Lord somehow, some way, I'm going to let him figure it out, is going to bless me with about $40 million. I believe it. I believe it. And to all y'all that said amen, I got you. I promise. Y'all don't say amen. <laughs> y'all stay asleep. Stay asleep. But I believe that God 
is going to bless me somehow, and I'm serious about this, with $40 million, that's my prayer A. But my prayer B is, but Lord, if I'm not ready for it, don't give it to me. Because, yes, we all want to have a little bit more money. But all money does is make you more of what you already are. I was telling my son the other day, if you're a giver with $10, you'll be a giver with $1,000. But if you are a jerk with $20, all you're going to be is a bigger jerk with $200,000. So, yes, God, I want him to open up the windows from heaven and pour down a blessing that I don't have room enough to receive. But then I say, God, if my character isn't ready to handle it, God, keep it. Because the last thing that I want is for God to give me a blessing that my character can't handle. The last thing that I want is for God to give me something that I'm not ready to handle. The last thing that I want is for God to give me something that I mismanage. So to God be the glory, church. Here it is. Yes, God, I want all of what you got, but I don't want to skip a step and the step that I don't want to skip is my readiness for it so for everybody here yes I know you want to get married yes I know you want the career I know you want the house I know you want the car I know you want everything that your heart desires but let the Lord know God if I'm not ready for it don't give it to me is there anybody else that's patient enough No, that's patient enough. Uh Uh-uh. That's patient enough to say, God, I'll wait on your timing. Because, God, if you give it to me too soon, I might mismanage the blessing that you've given me. And so now, the last thing that you want to do is skip a step. Because you got to stay in sequence. But now, also, the reason why the Lord doesn't want you to skip a step is because God wants you to appreciate every step. Because God has put something in every step that is meaningful for the time that we get to the stage. But most of us want the stage with the bright lights, with the cool stuff, but we haven't learned how to appreciate the step. So what I'm saying is you need to thank God for every step before you get to the stage. And here's a part of my testimony. Y'all quiet here today, but I feel like preaching. I feel good in God because, yes, God has not gotten me to my expected end just yet. But I'm thanking the Lord for my step because whatever God has at this point in the journey of my life, I lift my hands with total praise and I'll say, God, I thank you for the step because I can appreciate the stage when I first appreciate the step. And see, when you appreciate the step, you have a different appreciation for God. See, this is the weird people that appreciate the steps. See, some of our testimonies aren't that big. Some of us can't say, yeah, God, I thank you you blessed me with a million dollars. Oh, God, I bless you that you got me. When you really appreciate the step, you'll say, God, I just thank you that I woke up and my knees worked this morning. (laughs) I need somebody to say amen. When you appreciate the steps, you say, God, I just thank you that I have the ability to talk this morning. That, God, I got a little bit of gas in my car. God, I just want to thank you that there's some blood running in my veins. That, God, I just want to thank you, even though I don't have the job that I like. I thank you, God, you bless me with a job to go to. God, yes, my children may not be acting right, but, God, I thank you that I just got some kids to carry on my name. When you appreciate the steps, you somehow thank God for the little things. You thank God that you woke up with vision in your eyes. Anybody thank God you can hear this morning? 
Anybody thank God that you got an elbow that works? When you thank God for the step, your appreciation for God is a lot different because you don't need the stage, but you just say, God, I just want to thank you right now that I got a shirt to put on my body, that I got a roof over my head, that I got a place to lay down. To God be the glory for all the blood-washed believers that can say, yeah, God, for every little step I take, I just want to thank you right now and I appreciate all the steps in my life because you'll never fully appreciate the stage until you've learned to appreciate every step. Every step doesn't feel good, but when God finally gets you to the stage, when you finally meet the person that appreciates you, when you finally find the one that values you, when you finally get the job that appreciates your skill set, when you finally get the thing that you've been praying for, now because you went through that, you'll praise even God, God even more for this. Because the Lord knows that you'll never appreciate the destination until you first appreciate the journey. Who's on a journey right now? Who's on a journey right now? Who's on a journey right now? Well, come on and thank God for the journey. If you're on a journey right now, it may not feel good. I know you got some arthritis in your body. I know you came in here with a migraine. I know you cried yourself to sleep last night, but thank God for the step. Because when God heals your body, when God gets you to the destined place, when God makes the things happen, that shout and that praise will be at a different level because you know that God didn't have to do it. Does anybody realize that God didn't have to do it? That God didn't have to pull you in. That God didn't have to make it happen. But when you realize that God and all of his grace found kindness with you, then now you just thank the Lord for every step in your life. So Jesus, Jesus said, I'm not going to allow you to crown me until you cross me because I ain't stip, skipping no steps. Remember I was telling y'all a couple of weeks when we were this, you know, if you ever had some potato salad and somehow somebody skipped a step, mm -mm, take that stuff back. <laughs> we ain't skipping no steps. <laughs> I don't know where you got that recipe from, but go back to Google and find something else. <laughs> but you left something out. The worst thing that you can do is skip a step. Some of you are skipping steps in your relationships. And you're setting yourself up for a life full of pain. But stay on track by staying in sequence. Is that all right? Come on, y'all stand. Stay on track. 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 Everybody say stay. That's the word as we're bringing this thing to a close. Stay. Stay, stay on track, stay on track. With every head bowed and every eye closed, here's an invitation for somebody. The step that you can't afford to skip is a step that leads you to the cross. This is where you come into acknowledgement of Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. 
I'm going to open up, extend an invitation to somebody here. You're here in the house of the Lord. You're hearing a word that says, stay on track. But you realize that you skipped a step and you've never submitted your life unto the Lord. This doesn't mean that you're perfect when you come to the Lord. All it means is that you're forgiven. All of us are just imperfect people. But we're forgiven. You can be forgiven too for all of your sins if you just accept Christ as your Lord and your Savior. If there's somebody here today you've never accepted Christ as your Savior and you want to do so today, we're not going to embarrass you. Just raise your hand right where you are. If you're ready to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, you're ready to accept Him. This is not a sign of the perfection of your life. This is all about the direction of your life. You're pointing yourself to the cross. First call is for salvation. Second call is for rededication. If there's somebody here, and don't be ashamed. Maybe you need to go back and repeat some stuff. Because something has knocked you off course and you're outside of the will of God. But now you need to hit the reset button and start all over. If there's somebody here you want to do over in God, a do over in God, you want to start all over and rededicate yourself to Him. This is where you say the Lord, I want to reconvene with you again. I want to start all over. I want to do over. The good news is, is that the Lord will accept you back as if you never left. If there's anybody here you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, just raise your hand right where you are. First call is for salvation. Second call is for rededication. Third call is to partner with us in ministry. If there's somebody here, you're without a church home, but you feel God moving here in this house, but you're not being pastored, you're not in fellowship with other believers, you may not know what it is, but you feel something here, and God is leading you here, we would absolutely love to have you. If you're without a church home and you feel this is the place that God is leading you to, just raise your hand right where you are. First call is for salvation. Second call is for rededication. Third call is a partner with us in ministry. For anybody that has raised your hand, we're not going to embarrass you. All we're going to do is just pray with you. Salvation, rededication to join our church. If any of these invitations are for you, just come join us up at the front. All I want to do is just pray with you at this time. Sing hallelujah.
now. So the Lord has led some uh, lady up to come and join our church here today. So we bless God for her. You can come over here, right here, right in front of me. Thank you, ma'am. Now, as we get ready to pray over her, I want to open up the altar. If there's anybody, you need the Lord to help you stay on track for whatever your expected end may be that is given by God, or you have something you need to offer before the Lord, come and run to the altar so that we can pray with you. Come on, praise team. a lot here, here at the altar. If you have pain in your eyes, raise your hand. If you have pain in your eyes, pain in your eyes, pain and you keep those hands lifted, pain in your eyes, pain in your eyes. Pain in your eyes. No, you cannot hold you down. No, you cannot hold you down. You're a healer, you're a healer, yes you are. You're a healer, yes you are, yes you are. You're a healer, you're a healer, yes you are. Staying on track, staying on track, staying on track. Everybody say stay, St say stay. A lot of the pain that we have has an intended purpose by God. Intended purpose. The purpose is that it drives us to the cross. 
drives us through the cross. For David said, the perfect sacrifice is a broken heart and a contrite spirit. So the wounds that we carry are there to serve a specific purpose. I know the wounds are heavy and I know that they hurt. But the Lord has allowed the wound so that he can be the very thing that you come to as your deliverer, as your healer, and as the one that will ultimately set you free. Everybody say stay. Everybody say stay. Stay on track. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, then you shall ask what it will and it shall be given. But you have to stay. You have to abide. You have to stay. You have to stay. With every head bowed, every eye closed, Spirit of the living God, in this moment in time, dear Lord, we come to you, dear God. First of all, saying that we thank you, Lord, that you have not forgotten about us. God, we thank you, dear Lord, that you have come to us, dear Lord, with an agenda that ultimately serves your purpose. Father, I thank you, dear Lord, that you have empowered us to occupy space here in this world and at this time. God, I'm asking, dear Lord, for every person here that has pain in their eyes, that, dear Lord, as we look deep into their eyes, dear God, that we will find you coming out. Dear Lord, I know that it comes with a greater level of surrenderance from them. I pray, dear Lord, that you're authorizing them, that you're giving them full permission or that they're giving you full permission, Lord, to take charge over every area of their life. God, we need you in this moment in this time. Y'all help me pray, church. Help me pray, church. Help me pray. Help me pray. I need all the saints praying. Strengthen us where we are weak, Lord. Bring things together, God, in the name of Jesus. Secure the futures, dear Lord, that you called us to. And God, we'll surrender everything to you. Now, God, we ask, dear Lord, that as we move forward, that you will eliminate every distraction. Every distraction. Every distraction that comes in the form of a person. Every distraction that comes in the form of a place. Every distraction that comes in the form of a thing. God, even if it's something that we've welcomed into our lives. God, we unwelcome it now. Because we know that it comes as a strategic plan from the enemy. To pull us away from you. But Father, we renew our focus as we manage our distractions. Now God, heal us in every area that we are broken, that we're hurt, that we're injured, and make everything okay. Make everything okay. Make everything okay. God, we don't know the way. But as David said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. We trust you with everything that we have. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Don't
you see that yes you are yes you are yes you are you are you are oh, oh, oh. listen we're, we're almost out of service but i need us to sing this song like it means something to you and even if it doesn't mean anything to you it may mean something to the person right beside you before we bless and give these certificates to our baptism candidates, come on, y'all stand. Come on, let's fill this house. Let's fill this house. Let's fill this house. Come on back, praise team. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, every voice lift up and sing hallelujah. Listen, you all help me here as we celebrate what God has done for two ladies here today. Miss Beverly Peoples, come on up here. Give me a big old hug. <laughs> God bless you, sister. Amen. And then Miss Sierra King, come up here, young lady. <laughs> Amen. Well, God is good and all the time. And when praises go up, Amen. Come on up here, Minister Maria. Let's give her a hand as she comes. God, glory to God. All right, just a few more announcements. Um, T-shirts for the 75th anniversary are on sale outside um, in the lobby. You can also sign up for the hike again in the lobby as well. To our guests, leave out immediately. Um, there will be someone out there to greet you and take you into Robinson, too. Let's go to God in prayer. Most gracious, loving God, God, we love you. We thank you. We honor you. We adore you, God. God, we thank you, Father God, for this great word, God. Thank you, Father God, for showing us and helping us to stay on track, God. Even starting today, God, when we leave this sanctuary, God, help us to manage our distractions. God, show us where we are being distracted at, Father God. Father, remind us, God, that we do not have to attend to every argument, God. Help us to say no to those arguments and those discussions that we shouldn't even be in, God, because we are your people and your people of purpose, God. Help us to stay in line and not to get out of order, God. So, God, we love you. We thank you. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen and amen. You all have an amazing week. We love you. Have an amazing week.